This is Tomo News for Friday, August 4th. Some Game of Thrones fans just don't deserve pets. Game of Thrones, the popular fantasy TV show based on the books by George R. R. Martin, has inspired people in many different ways, from cosplay to parties. And now the GOT craze has moved on to huskies, you know, due to their resemblance to the show's dire wolves. The show's fictional dire wolves are an unusually large and intelligent species of wolf, and a few of them are adopted by the show's characters. However, apparently some fans are fantasizing about having one of their own of these fictional animals, so they've gone out and bought or adopted huskies, we suppose in the hopes they'll grow up to look like dire wolves? But guess what? After finding out that raising a pet is actually like a whole bunch of, like, work, these furry fans have abandoned their furry friends. Good job, guys. Good job. Very Cersei of you. Mm -hmm. The sad trend has resulted in an increased number of the large dogs being left homeless or getting shipped to dog rescue centers and shelters. Two California dog rescue facilities have recently reported a major rise in husky abandonment. Northern California sled dog rescue president Angelique Miller says fans are just following what they think is a cute trend. And this isn't the first reported rise in dog abandonment cases influenced by pop culture. Similar upticks in dogs being left homeless also occurred with the husky breed after the movies Eight Below and Snow Dogs were released. Come on, people, real life and TV aren't the. Oh, forget it. Well, that's uh, one way to get off first. A teenage airline passenger was taken to the hospital for mental health treatment after he jumped out of a plane emergency exit door. The 17-year-old boy bailed just minutes after Copa Airlines Flight 208 from Panama City landed at San Francisco on Tuesday. The boy, who's a U.S. citizen and was traveling by himself, then slid down the Boeing 737's wing and ran onto the runway, where he was held by some construction workers until the cops showed up. According to reports, the boy seemed stressed out on the flight and had been acting fidgety. The airline said he moved so fast that he was gone before any of the crew could react. Back on board, a crew member blocked the door until the plane made it safely to the gate. The plane was on the tarmac for about an hour, but no one was injured in the incident and no other flights were affected. Sacred deer in Japan being captured for roaming too much. Ever heard of the Sika deer of Nara, Japan? You may have seen them while scrolling through your Instagram feed. They're quite popular over there. Unfortunately for these friendly animals, city officials feel they're getting a bit too close for comfort with the animals wandering into town and wrecking regional agriculture. So, some of them may be kindly asked to leave. The Sika deer have roamed the area for decades, a population explosion igniting roughly a century ago when their main predator, the local wolf, went extinct. Now, an estimated 1,200 of them have clustered in the city central park region. Tourists are known to frequent the area to feed the deer crackers. And amazingly, these creatures have figured out that bowing to humans may earn them a few more snacks. Respect! As the deer have multiplied, though, they've been spilling over into fields, casually consuming crops and angering farmers, causing an annual $54 million in damage. The notion of a call was dismissed, with the animal classified as a national treasure, protected by law. Instead, humane traps will be set for the relocation of 120 of them. With the aim to have the balance between man and deer restored by next March, a local government official was quoted as saying, we want to continue efforts to coexist in peace while preventing damage to crops. Hmm, a land where people consider and accommodate the feelings of deer? You could call it Bambi's Paradise. Or not. This robot water snake hunts pollution on autopilot. Meet Lake Geneva's newest swimmer, the Envirobot, an autonomous pollution hunter. Gulp. The Envirobot is four feet long and comprises several special purpose modules that constitute its eel-like design. The purpose of these modules are twofold. First, each has a small electric motor that lets the robot swim like a water snake. Secondly, each segment has a unique sensor for gathering a variety of data. For example, biological sensors contain tiny organisms or bacteria that react to the presence of pollutive toxins. Meanwhile, electrical sensors can track water temperature and chemical sensors test water acidity. More modules can be added as needed. The robot can swim on a route or make its own way through a body of water to find the source of pollution. And while it's very cool, we're not exactly sure we'd want it swimming beside us. Dubai's torch tower gets torched again. 
A residential skyscraper in Dubai was engulfed by a massive blaze that raged on for hours before being brought under control. Just after midnight on Friday, a fire broke out at the 86-story Torch Tower, which sits near Dubai Marina in the United Arab Emirates. Residents were woken up by the sound of fire alarms and were quickly evacuated from the building. As the blaze spread to several floors, burning debris fell from the structure and set fire to at least two cars in the parking deck. Firefighters fought the fire from inside the building and successfully put it out three hours after it began. No casualties were reported. The incident marks the second time the unfortunately named structure has caught fire. The first blaze in 2015 revealed a flammable external cladding, similar to those used in the deadly Grenfell Tower Inferno in London. Renovations were still ongoing when the second fire struck. Here's hoping that when they renovate again, they'll add in a name change too. South Asia faces a hot, humid, and deadly future. Climate change will make parts of South Asia too hot to live in by the end of the century, threatening the lives of millions of the world's poorest people. In 2015, more than 3,500 people were killed in heat waves in the region, but things are apparently going to get much, much worse. The authors of a new study say densely populated agricultural regions in South Asia will experience increases in heat and humidity that will make them uninhabitable by the year 2100. The scientists say if climate change continues on its current trajectory, heat waves will cause the wet bulb temperature to rise to deadly levels in parts of India, Pakistan, Bangladesh, and Sri Lanka. Wet bulb temperature is calculated by combining temperature, humidity, wind speed, sun angle, and cloud cover to measure heat stress in direct sunlight. According to the study, by the year 2100, 75% of South Asia's population would experience wet bulb temperatures higher than 31 degrees Celsius, which is dangerous for humans. In this scenario, 4% of the population would also experience deadly wet bulb temperatures exceeding 35 degrees. South Asia is home to one-fifth of the world's population and has high levels of poverty. Scientists say the poor will feel the brunt of rising temperatures because they lack access to air conditioning and other methods to beat the heat. They say cutting greenhouse gas emissions would help lower the impact of climate change on the poor. What happens when you shoot an armadillo? Spoiler, nothing pretty. A Texas man learned the hard way not to mess with armadillos after he got a nasty head wound from shooting at one. The fellow spotted the varmint sneaking around on his property at 3 o'clock in the morning and shot at it three times with a revolver. But his rounds were thwarted by the animal's hard shell, which deflected at least one of the bullets and caused it to ricochet right back at him. The trigger-happy Texan survived, but had to be airlifted to the hospital to have his jaw wired shut. Ooh, that's gotta hurt. As for the armadillo, the cops couldn't find the little critter, so no one knows how it's doing. If it's alive, it's probably all too happy to have gotten payback on a gun-crazy human. Newlywed's body found buried in deep hole dug on beach. Digging holes in the sand is just part of a day at the beach, but for a 30-year-old newlywed on vacation, a deep hole in the dark quickly became her grave. In Ocean City, Maryland, posted beach regulations stipulate holes must not be dug more than knee-deep of the smallest person in the group. Authorities aren't sure who's responsible for digging the hole and carelessly leaving it behind, but tourist Ashley O'Connor somehow found herself in it. She was last spotted on the beach sometime after 2 a.m. on July 31st. Holes dug in the sand can quickly cave in and collapse, burying unsuspecting victims under the pressure within seconds. The next morning, around 6.30 a.m., beachgoers spotted a limp arm sticking out of the sand. It was Ashley's. Currently, investigators do not suspect any foul play. CBS News reports that globally, 31 people have died from similar sand traps over the past decade. Car smuggling donkeys get busted. South African cops have nabbed four donkeys trying to smuggle a jacked car near the border with Zimbabwe. Police say thieves were using the vehicular mules to smuggle a stolen Mercedes Benz across the dry Limpopo River. The river's name means strong, gushing waterfalls, and it flows through Botswana, Mozambique, and South Africa. The thieves' non-traditional Grand Theft Auto venture quickly turned to ash when the animals became tired. Next, the cops made their move, but the suspects hauled ass into a forest on the Zimbabwe side of the border. So why didn't they just drive the car? Well, the BBC reports that this might be due to the fact that most modern cars are fitted with an engine-activated tracker. There's no word on the donkey's current whereabouts, but they're definitely looking at a long time in the pen. 
you never know what's in the water. It may be a delicious piece of seafood to some, but anyone who ventures into the ocean should be aware that the swordfish is a totally different proposition in the water than it is on a dinner plate. One British tourist on a round-the-world trip really got the point when he was speared through the throat in waters off Indonesia. 57-year-old Alan Pope was snorkeling near the resort island of Bali in October last year when he had a very close shave. News of the incident has only just been reported this week. Pope told the media he noticed the water was quite choppy that day, before he suddenly felt a great thumping whack on the side of his head. Alan's wife Sharon said she saw her husband get knocked down. He was coughing and spitting up blood, but it then took 30 minutes for them to reach a small nearby island. Unfortunately, the small clinic on the island there was only able to remove the top half of the swordfish's long, flat bill from the side of Pope's neck. Pope was transferred to a hospital in Bali with the rest of the swordfish's spear, still deeply embedded in his skin. Six inches of the fish's harpoon remained there, and doctors feared they might cut Pope's jugular vein if they removed it. However, 36 hours after the incident, and following a three-hour operation, the swordfish spike was finally removed from Pope's neck. And a couple days after recovering in hospital, Pope and his wife Sharon were able to continue with their vacation. Pope even got a tattoo of a swordfish on his arm to remind him of his spiky brush with death. New Solar Sunglasses Harvest Solar Power Researchers in Germany have successfully developed a pair of sunglasses that can generate power. The sunglasses contain organic solar cells, which are flexible and can be made into a variety of shapes and colors. The frames are also equipped with electronics, including a microprocessor, two sensors, and two displays. The solar power captured by the lenses are used to run the electronics, which measure current illumination intensity and ambient temperatures that are displayed on bar graphs. The lenses can generate about 200 milliwatts of excess power, which is enough to run devices such as a step counter, hearing aid, or a small speaker. The solar sunglasses work best in direct sunlight, but they can also work in dimmer lighting environments, such as inside homes or at the office. The researchers say the technology could be applied to the glass facades of high-rise buildings. Such a large surface area would enable the new solar cells to generate significantly more power, 